First, the easy part about CNG, the part you're gonna like, all the main benefits. Number one, cheap. Here it's about two and a half, a little bit more than that per gallon equivalent. Now this is in California at a time we're paying 420 on up to 470 for premium. This is a big discount. Number two, it's real clean, almost no carbon monoxide output in the exhaust, and two-thirds less NOx, the stuff that really creates the nasty smog. Number three, all the bennies, tax credits, maybe some rebates, maybe a free HOV lane pass in your state, even a place where hybrids no longer get one. It rolls up into a little VIP club of sorts. These incentives are very important to seeding the market, to getting these markets for clean vehicles to a, a tipping point where they will take off on their own. Number four, less reliance on foreign energy. Man, we're not a political show, so I'm not gonna dive into that. But bottom line is, America has a lot of natural gas without going anywhere to go shopping for it. Now, the challenges around CNG cars are also a foursome. Storage, energy density, fueling, and combustion. First, storage. Maybe it's better termed infrastructure and distribution. Uh, your house has a constant connection to a relatively low pressure natural gas source. Your car needs almost the opposite, a very occasional connection to a high pressure source. And that's gonna require some infrastructure, whether it's a pump in your house or getting to a pump that is relatively scarce today. Unlike gasoline or diesel, natural gas needs to be compressed maintained that way at filling locations like this, and maintained that way in your car, a challenge you never encounter with gasoline or diesel. CNG cars carry natural gas compressed to just 1% of its natural volume. It is really crushed down, up to 3,600 PSI, which leads to a possibly bulky and expensive tank. And that leads us to challenge number two which is energy density. Now, compressed natural gas has somewhat less energy per a certain volume compared to gasoline, or even more so compared to diesel. However, the biggest challenge around range has to do not with the density of the fuel, but how much you can carry in current car design. Partly because the cylinder design for a compressed natural gas car has to be a certain size and shape to be that strong. Remember, 3,600 PSI? They can make gas tanks any shape to fit them anywhere and hold even more fuel. For example, on this Honda Civic GX, which is basically the flagship of family cars that run on natural gas from the factory, you get about 250 miles out of a full but smaller tank of compressed natural gas versus 380 on a tank full of gasoline in the more common version. Third challenge right now is refueling. You probably haven't seen a lot of natural gas pumps at your local gas station. That's a process that's underway. In the meantime, you might be carrying a guide like this that tells you where they are, or using the navigation system in a car like this that will tell you where they are when you need one. Typically, these things are gonna be operated by utilities, uh, fleet companies, your local bus fleet, for example, or maybe uh, one of the new generation of purpose-built consumer refilling stations. Finally, the fourth challenge is all around this area of combustion. If you want to run compressed natural gas in your current car, you can't. It's not like gasoline, even though they share three letters. You've got to do a fairly extensive changeup of the fuel metering and distribution parts within your vehicle, as well as install that high-tech and smaller tank we talked about earlier. All in, it could be a five to $10,000 conversion job. That's why a lot of folks you know have never done it. And once you do a CNG conversion, the car tends to be a little less of a performance car. This Civic GX, for example, is about 1.8 seconds slower to 60 than its gas engine sibling. Although most folks who buy these cars don't buy them for dragster performance. And finally, all this combustion technology and tank technology leads to a more expensive car. Like most other alternative fuel vehicles, there's a five, six, seven thousand dollar delta that you've got to work off in cost savings on the fuel, as well as whatever rebates or credits are available to you. So here's my tech shopping list I'm watching to see where CNG cars are really going to go. First of all, keep an eye on tank design. We talked about the hurdles in the current tank. Future designs may involve a couple of new things. First of all, multi-compartment tanks that can be made of small, strong compartments linked together, shaped to fit where the car really wants them. That increases capacity, as does a technology that would put sort of a honeycomb, a carbon honeycomb inside the tank that has much more surface area on which to attach the compressed gas. This is all part of a federal government bounty to create a much better, lighter, higher capacity tank for far less money that can get around these expensive cylinders we're dealing with now. 
Next, I'm watching Home CNG Compressor Design. In other words, a filling station for your home. You can get these today. They cost three, four thousand dollars, another three thousand to install. Most folks aren't gonna be able to swing that. The government's got another bounty program out there saying, look, who can be the first to bring a $500 home compressor fueling station on the market that will get the job done easily overnight from your low pressure home source. Then there's fuel cost. Again, not my expertise, but the idea that there's a big delta between natural gas and gasoline is key to the appeal of these vehicles. Finally, fuel sustainability. Right now we get most of our natural gas out of sources that are prehistoric and are finite. Going forward, there's a lot of research being done into getting biomethane, methane that is coming from sorts of waste we create all the time in other avenues of life.